back to the project. Here's what we've got on tap today. We're dealing with neck problems. A lot of the, the serious neck problems we have end up in this position. And what's going on is we see lower cervical flexion and lower, lower neck flexion combined with upper cervical extension. So what it looks like is this is pure neck extension or a pure flexion, but what mostly happens is that people tilt forward, we get some kind of shearing, lower cervical flexion, upper cervical extension. And you notice that goes with the rounded shoulder posture. In fact, when people are stuck in the flexed cobra hood versus the active young cobra position, or a little bit of the flexed cobra, it actually makes it impossible to get my neck into a better position. Subsequently, short scalings erupt. I, I get tight and short in the front. I get really tonically tight here. The vader gets tight, and I end up in this kind of shoulder posture. And this makes it difficult to achieve good overhead positions. It makes it difficult to kind of support a rack on the other side. So here's what we've got going on tonight. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to work on kind of the neck. And the first part when I think about fixing the neck is I go after the thoracic spine. So if I can improve extension, then all of a sudden it frees up the possibility to be able to work on the other structures and achieve a more upright posture. This is a, <clears throat> a Kaltenborn thoracic wedge. It's made in Norway. In fact, it says Norex, made in Norway. And uh, <clears throat> these guys believe that, imagine that this is a kind of souped up version of the double lacrosse ball. It's very stiff. A lot of people could potentially have the damage or uh, could do too much shearing on it, but you could basically do the same thing. They sell these on any, any side if you look at, at thoracic wedge. And a lot of our athletes end up being very stiff, and this is a good way to start to get into those upper cervical places because of the uh, kind of wedge shape. It allows you to get up in that high thoracic and, and then create some space that you necessarily can't get at with the double lacrosse ball. So this is worthwhile having. I can still do all of my normal bits here, lock off, but I'm going to just create a much more aggressive kind of motion. And then I tie the arms in. So the very first thing that we can go after with this thoracic wedge is some of the higher motion segments. We've been tipping our bodies up to get it, but a thoracic wedge can do it. So spend a few minutes working on your double cross ball. Unglue really the high neck. Second piece we're going to go after, this first rib. This first rib gives so many people problems. And what we're really looking at is less kind of the first, the front part of the first rib, but more the second behind, or kind of the posterior first rib. I'm going to take my trusty Mashunga sword. I'm going to trim that thing in. And again, the first rib in the front, big brachial plexus goes over it, but I'm going to really kind of get that thing in the back, wind up tight. And then here's what I want you to do. I want you to play with different arm positions. So really wind that thing up and then play with those positions. Oh, reach, extend, find out where that first rib really acts like a strut. Pull across, look at inter-rotation, bring that arm up uh, onto the side, and then you can see where that rib gets tight. Hang out and see if you can't mobilize that rib. Take a big breath. Exhale, reach, see if you can get into that thing. Tennis ball into the PVC. Last piece. And then, of course, you can test, retest, and be like, oh, it's so much better. Last piece is go ahead and we're going to untie the neck. I'm going to set the band up low, flip it up into these tight positions. Arm goes up. Woo. I'm going to go ahead and turn the wrist to the sky. And in this position, my, my shoulder is back, and I'm just going to wind and add a little tension on my head to open up the neck. So the kind of load sequence is to the side and then down, and I add that piece. Keeping that tying those pieces together, I'm tight here, but tying the neck in, nice and easy. Go ahead and just let the your weight of your hand pull your head over two minutes, and we'll see the magic that happens as those things release. Head comes back in the line, and you suddenly become a leopard. See you guys tomorrow.